Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to the channel. Have you ever found yourself in need of engraving and cutting a sign that, or other object that's just larger than what your work area on your laser is? Well, in this video, I'm going to show you how to do that using the print and cut feature and a front pass through on my CO2 laser. So we'll go into the light burn and show you how to do it. And I got a couple little neat tricks I think I'll show you along the way as well. So here we go. So we have the sign here with, with this couple's name and a gray border around it and cut out. And it's obviously larger than what my work area is. So first thing we're going to select it and I'm going to hit the period key to rotate at 90 degrees. Now we need to cut this into two pieces to be able to do this job. So I'm going to grab the rectangle tool and a rectangle up here and put that onto a tool layer and grab the select key. Now what I don't want to do is I don't want to cut through that H. I'd rather avoid cutting any of the letters if at all possible. I really want the only cuts to be on the border. That's so I'm going to drag it down here in between the two letters. I need to right click on my tool layer convert it to a path. Once it's a path, I can grab the node editor. I'm going to click a node here and hit the I key and do another one over here with the I key. And then I'm going to select and grab both of those and using the arrow key, just move it up. And you could you can move the nodes individually or whatever. I just, by selecting those two nodes and using the arrow key, they move together and it remained a nice um, horizontal line like I need it to be. So I'm done with the node editor. Now we will select the graphic and then shift select the tool layer that we're using as a cut line. And the order you do this is important. You have to do the one you're, the item you want to cut you select first, the item you're cutting with you select second, and then go to tools, cut shapes. Now you see the tool layer disappeared. And the bottom half is selected, the top half is not. So if I grab this, see what it did? It cut the, through the border lines right here, giving me two separate pieces to my graphic. I'm going to undo that, put it back where it belongs. Now the next thing we need is a couple of targets in order to be able to use the print and cut feature. So I'm going to grab the circle tool. I'll do it over here so we can see a little better. Hold down shift to make a good circle. And I just want to be like six millimeters. And we'll zoom in here, grab the pencil tool. And you notice how the um, cursor changes to blue, blue angle goes away. That means you are lined up right on the center axis. So I'll click there, drag across holding shift until we get to the other side, click, and then right click to get out of the line tool, and then do the same thing vertically. Click, shift, click, and then right click. And then we can escape out of that. Now we will select the entire target, group it together. Actually, let me make sure it's center first, undo. Yeah, hit the bullseye, make sure all, all the lines and everything are where they belong. Now I'll hit the target to group. And I'm going to put that on the orange layer. Let's drag this over here. All right, we need, I got to put this, I don't have a lot of space off to the side. I'm going to put it right, right next to the cut line on this side. My work, work piece does not have a lot of extra space. And I'm going to duplicate that by Command D. And then drag it across the other side. And just put it out here somewhere. I do have a little more room on this side. Actually, I'm going to keep it close. I'm just doing this on a piece of cardboard for a test. So now we have our two targets in place. We have our, our sign cut. Now, and we also have cut selected graphics checked because I don't want to do part of this. 
put that up so it cuts the cut is last. I'm gonna do the target. I think I'm gonna do the target first. Target, then the engrave. I'm just changing the whole order of everything up. Target, letters, and then the outer engrave, then the cut. So what I need to do now is I need to shift and select the two targets, which is why I put them on their own. They could have been on the blue layer, but it makes it easier to select them. I can just hold down the shift key and, and click over here on the layer name, and it selects both of them at one shot. And then I will shift and select my other graphic. So now if we look at the preview, this is what's going to engrave. It's going to start here. It's going to do the two targets first, then the letters. Then I'll do the border. And that's 23 minutes. I'm going to see what happens if I change this to flood fill, if it makes it any better. We're at 23 minutes, and now we're at 24 minutes. It's actually longer. <laughs> so things do not always work out like you think they should. I'm going to get rid of flood fill again. Okay. And we are just going to frame this first. It should be good. I believe I have the material set in the right place. But let's go take a look and put it on frame. All right, I think we're good. Let's go ahead and run this real quick. And when it's done, we'll come back and I'll show you what we have to do to do the second half. Okay, well, obviously I did not have my engraved settings set properly for this. All right, what you just might have saw me do in there is getting the laser set up right over the first target. So what we need to do now is grab the entire thing, project and rotate it 180 degrees. So that's one of the tricks I'm showing you is we're going with 180 degree rotation of it. If it was <clears throat> Larger than what larger than half of your bed size, you would have to go out out the rear pass through to get it to get everything to work out. But since this total size project is is less than double my bed size, I can get both sides on just by flipping it 180 degrees. So the cardboard is a, is flipped around out on the laser bed, and I have aligned the laser with this target right here. And unfortunately, when it did the cutout, this target was just off the edge, and that, that's a little floppy. So hopefully this will work out okay. But let's get into the print and cut feature. We're going to start the wizard. We're going to select this target. And I already have the laser set there. So we're going to click Set. So it knows that that's where the laser is. Now I want to... Select this one here on the other side, and I'm going to click the jog button. I'm just going to move the laser over there. Then I will have to go back out. And I don't want to move the cardboard. I need to adjust the laser head position to meet this target. So let me go back out to the laser and do that. Oh, and we are very close. Very, very close. 
Try to pulse. I think we're good. Let me set this position. And now we do not want to scale this. We click no scaling. And I didn't point this out the first time around for the first half. But when it, oh, I couldn't because this is the print and cut portion. Yeah. <clears throat> but what I didn't point out in the first half is I used a start button. Typically, and especially on an on a actual project I'm doing, I'll use the send button and start it from the laser. But since this is just for a video and just a draft on cardboard, I'm using the start button just because it's quicker. Save me a couple steps walking back and forth. But now, when, once you have your print and cut set up, you'll see your, your red, and, red and blue targets are highlighted. And over here in the laser window, it will say ready, print and cut, unscaled. And unscaled is what you want to use most of the time, especially if it's a light burn project. If it's something that you've printed out of Adobe Illustrator or something else, and then you're actually cutting out like stickers or something like that, you may need to use a scaled feature at that point. But for typically for light burn projects, you do, don't want to use scaled, you just want to be unscaled. So let's hit start again, and we'll go back out and watch, watch the cut finish. Ah, see, I forgot to hit, I forgot to select my cut. So this time I want the top half, I do not want the targets to print. They're not selected, and I'm actually going to turn the output for those off. They can still stay, stay shown, but I'm going to turn them off just for safety. And let me check the... Okay. Yeah, that's what we want to see. So now we'll hit start. And it's doing the outline of the letters first, then it'll go do the rest of the border, and then the final cutout. And we'll take a good look at it when it's done. look right there you can see it's off just a little bit I had my alignment not quite perfect but overall I mean that's something on this particular design file you could probably get away with but I believe the issue was on cardboard especially it's hard to see where my laser point actually goes in and hits So as, as you see, it, it worked out pretty good, but not quite perfect. And I'm sure that was because my alignment was off just a touch. It's difficult on the cardboard for me to see exactly where the laser is hitting when I'm trying to line up the target, especially with that one target got blown out. So <clears throat> it's a little bit easier when you're dealing with wood. It seriously is, but I wouldn't suggest dealing with wood until you have the process at least locked down in your brain because you can certainly waste a lot of material trying to do this and a lot of time. I mean, this this little job took almost an hour to, to engrave in total. So, <clears throat> and I could have sped it up by just doing the outline of the uh, outer border, but I chose not to. Oh, which reminds me, when you're doing your cut shapes, like I did with the rectangle, if you have a fill layer like that, when you do the cut, 
you have to have it turned on fill, and it will keep it as a, a closed shape. If you do this in line mode, it will be an open shape and it won't fill. You'll have to do some adjusting and add lines and stuff, and you don't want to do that if you don't have to. Yeah, let me show you real quickly what I'm talking about there. So we're in Lightburn, we've got our graphic, and I'm gonna just show you here with a quick cut line. Let me change the color of that. A little darker, easier to see maybe, okay. So right now, if we cut it as it is, I grab the, the graphic, shift click the outline that we're using for a cut, cut shapes, and everything is still filled because they are in totally closed lines. You see all the ends, all the ends of the shapes are closed off. They're still closed shapes. Look back out of there, and let's change it now to line to line mode, and do the exact same operation. So I select a graphic, select a rectangle, cut shapes, and now they are all open-ended lines. You know, if I put it in fill mode, they don't fill because they're not closed shapes. It has to be a closed shape in order to fill. Okay, so that's just one of the neat tips that I forgot to mention well, when, when we were there. But when you do your cut shapes, if you have a fill layer that you want to remain a fill layer, you have to have it in fill mode in order to cut that. The other tip was that you can don't have to use the entire pass through. You don't have to go front to back. You can actually take, do one half, flip the graphic around, flip your workpiece around, and do the other half just in reverse, all from the front side, which is really convenient, especially if your laser is against the wall and you don't ha you don't have to pull it out in order to have room for the pass through to work. Now, if you have a, a larger piece that you know you have to do in, in three or four or more sections because it's just too big, then then obviously you will have to use the rear pass through. And the third tip was the way that we arranged our cut line so that it didn't go through any letters so that, you know, we just, we jogged the cut line and the graphic so that we would have fewer places that had to match up in the end. So that's it for this video. I appreciate it. If you liked the video, if you subscribe to my channel, go ahead and leave a comment if there's something that you, that I did that you didn't understand, or if you have a different way of doing things. Let me know. I mean, I'm, I'm always open to learning more. I, I love learning. It's crazy. And finally, if you do me a huge favor, down in my description, there's some Amazon links and also just a general Amazon link. They're affiliate links. If you use those links before you go shopping at Amazon and purchase something, I'll get a little, little bit of a kickback off that. And that helps me to keep making videos and buying materials to, to do my laser projects and stuff. So... Hope it was informational for you. Thanks for watching. See you next time.